stuff that your clients won't tell you. This isn't like a technical thing. It's more of like a psychological thing. So it's kind of like, yeah, it's like if you were talking to a person who isn't paying you, like what insecurities they might have. Um, I did, I blurred out any, any curse words I may have felt like putting in there. A lot of these are going to overlap just because that's how humans work. So kind of, there are some subtle differences between the points I'm going to make, but uh, also let me know if I'm talking too fast. It's just a thing I do. So please feel free to stop me and be like, maybe breathe sometime <laughs> during this. All right. So let's, let me tell you about myself. Uh, I should know this, but I'm going to read it from the slide. I'm 25. I'll be 26 at some point, but presently I'm 25. I've been using WordPress since 2004. Uh, I've been building, educating, speaking, and whatnot. I, uh, the name tag that you'll see me wearing in addition to my lanyard is actually from Bed Bath & Beyond. It's just really convenient, actually. You should all get name tags from some place. Uh, you, can, you can ask me about coupons if you really want to, uh, but I might get grumpy about it. And then if you've seen me speak before, you know my dog, Olive, who I feature in every presentation. Uh, right now, you actually have to go to www.clientproofwp.com. Uh, the domain is fighting me for some reason, which is ironic given the plugin. I'll tell you more about it later. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Corey Freeman. I've been tweeting all weekend. And my personal blog, hashtag Corey, if you want to read other semi vulgar things. All right. Let's start at the beginning. Clients are human people, okay? So, you know, let's assume you've got a client, not like a swarm of clients, not like a legion of clients or agencies. Not, you know, not like a battalion, just like a client, a person who's paying you, you know. You're sitting in the room with them. They're staring at a laptop or drinking coffee or whatever people do. And, you know, they're, they've got the same insecurities that you have. So what are they thinking? You know, why are they like this? Why... Do they hate you and make things harder <laughs> for you and yourself? I just added these gifts last minute. I felt I had to try and keep you guys engaged here. Look, let's talk about, so these are points we're going to talk about um, to kind of, so you understand the mentality behind the people who are driving you crazy. You know, because we all have that one client and you're like, why am I having to do this? And it's probably because of one of these reasons. Clients tend to assume that you think that they're stupid, okay? They also assume that they are stupid, but more importantly is that they take that insecurity and project it onto you, okay? So clients who can't figure out an issue, the people who hire you in the first place for whatever it is you specialize in are trying to shield themselves from embarrassment, kind of like when you go to the dentist and you don't want to tell them that you haven't flossed in forever. Like, you want to go in there and pretend that you've flossed even though they can tell, you know? So it's, you want to reassure your clients that they're not, like, you're not stupid. You know, this isn't your jam. Like, we, we're doing the WordPress. You pay us money to do the WordPress. But don't become their therapist, because that can happen. <laughs> okay? You want to adopt radio silence whenever they start getting personal. Just reassure them, but don't, don't actually go get coffee with them, you guys. It's, don't mix friendship and, and work. You either won't get paid or you won't have a friend anymore. Some of you know that, and some of you are like, is that? That's a real thing. It happens. I promise you. Um, but yeah, they might also use, they'll use humor like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm so dumb that I couldn't even do this. Or like, I'm like an old grandmother. And it's like, no, you can learn anything if you really want to. They just, you know, they don't want to learn this. So don't take that route and uh, let them continue to think that way. All right. And clients know what they want, just not how to do it, okay? So clients are going to look at you and be like, let's just do this thing. I don't care what it is. All right, this is from one of my favorite animes. It's There's a generic mindset that uh, clients don't know what they want. We all get into that. Some of us will have said it during our talks. Some of us will chat about it. Like clients don't, they do. Clients do know what they want, but they have no idea how to make it work, okay? So, like, don't be afraid to gently tell them the reason we're not putting a slideshow on is because they don't, nobody's watching it. You know, so let's pick this image that really speaks to you. 
I know you've seen slideshows on like Forbes and whatnot, but I'm telling you, man, the data says it doesn't work. You know, clarify the vision through your experience. Work with them. Remember that you know what you're talking about. All right, don't don't let them kind of hassle you, but don't be mean about it. Um, that's the end of what that was going to say. Someone bring me more coffee. That'd be great. I'll, I'll give you a coupon. I think I have a circular in my backpack. Clients want to be helpful. This is part of their like feeling dumb to reassure themselves is that they want to help you. Okay, so they want to sit there and watch you while you work, just carefully peering <laughs> until finally you go insane. This is from Full Metal Alchemist, also a great show. <laughs> All right, so they're gonna. You, anyone gotten the email that's like, I found this. I think it'll help. Yes, I see a couple of nods and hand raises. Yeah, they'll send you like a link to the fact for WordPress itself. Like, this is really helpful knowledge. I'm like, I know. They'll send you just a link to stackoverflow.com. They're like, look here for solutions. That's because they want to achieve their goals just as much as you do. And they want to help. Like, they want to make this, they want to be involved and they want to make it easy. And they're afraid that they're not doing it right. Again, hold fast to your knowledge. You're the expert. Just hang in there, all right? Gently educate. Reassure them that they're not stupid. You know, be like, thanks, I got this. Very experienced. Yeah. All right. Clients also want to feel professional. 30 Rock? No. Yeah, 30 Rock. I was thinking Third Rock from the Sun just now. You know? But everyone, you're building a website because you want to get that feeling, that professional feeling, you know? You want to see an obvious difference between when they started and like signed that contract or did that deposit to when they sign off on it, you know? And for a lot of clients, depending on your work process, this can look like magic to them, you know? And that's confusing. It's, um, there's an old, there's a couple of old things. So there's an old thing that they explored with cake mix. It used to be that you could just add water to cake mix and it would make you a cake. And people hated that. Nobody felt it was personal enough, so they added a step. So now you have to add like water and milk and egg to get the cake, even though you don't really have to. It's a little bit of theater, you know? There's also um, like the locksmith. You call a locksmith, they charge you 50 bucks. It takes them two seconds to open the lock. Like you want them to take a little bit longer just to make you feel better. <laughs> Clients want to feel professional, you know? They want to feel like they've really gotten in there and this can be second guessing you you know what <coughs> are you sure that this is the right font face because I've been looking at it are you sure that this is the color like I said this will overlap you know just stay confident don't let all of those questions tear you down just hang in there right like you're a parent to a client basically I guess I'm not a parent <laughs> Saying that though clients don't really want to learn how to build websites okay how does this work fighting spirit that's how it works you got it's a good show you guys <laughs> uh, you know your clients will be like oh snacks thanks yeah thank you that's so nice oh man now I gotta find a coupon <laughs> now I gotta walk to my car and get that ten dollar off we'll f I'll figure it out I promise give me your Twitter we're gonna figure this out um, this, I'm going to drink this right now. <laughs> oh, God. I so needed that. That girl wins. She wins WordCamp. I mean, you can have this shirt that I got. It's a medium. It's a medium. It's, it's a medium. Fun fact. Uh, you know, you, clients don't really want to learn. You look at them, you're like, we're going to use WordPress because it's a content management system and it's got like millions of uses. It powers 30% of the web. Man, nobody cares. Okay? They don't care. They don't want to understand how to update it. They don't really want to log into the back end. They just want to like change the words around. Don't confuse this with not teaching your client anything like from before. Okay, don't don't not tell them things. Just remember, they don't want to he they don't want to hear the theory. You'll go to a bunch of different design websites. You'll be like, here's our process. Exciting, but I don't really want to know all of the processes. You know, if I want you to do my SEO, you don't have to start telling me about redirects and links and backlinks and spiders and crawling and all that. I'm hiring you to press all the fancy buttons for me, you know. 
And that, you know, still, same thing. Setbacks, fear and insecurity. The reason they don't want to learn, but they want to feel like they've learned, it all stems from fear. The greatest thing, some clients are going to assume that you think you're better than they are. You know? They're going to say, you think I'm stupid. You think you're better than me. You know, I blame you for all of my issues. Road to El Dorado. You're not, okay? Clients, again, fear. They, you know what you're doing. They don't know what they're doing. They think you're better than them. So this is a little fun mental exercise. If you and your client sat down at a coffee table and you could both punch each other in the face, you're on the same level, okay? You both have the same level of humanity. It's, I don't know, it was like 2 a.m., I think, when I came up with that one. Not my best, but whatever. <laughs> we're, all, we're all humans. Don't, don't fight your clients on things. Okay, here are possible takeaways from what I'm sure has been like five minutes. Most client frustration comes from fear and insecurity. And the best way to combat that frustration is to hold fast to your experience, okay? Clients aren't stupid, they just want clarification, but they don't want to learn, all right? They just want to know what's happening, all right? Our job is to build functional websites for them, help them achieve their goals, not to fight them on what we think it should look like. And also a shameless plug, yay. So I built a plugin. You have to put the www before it, apparently, which is great. And it's basically, it's just a WordPress plugin that makes the dashboard con from confusing to shiny and happy for the client so you can go about your business without them breaking stuff. That was apparently all of my slides. I am so prepared. Let's have a group discussion. Anyone? Any questions? No. All right. Yes? Of course I can. Let's just turn into an awkward demonstration. Let's see here. That's not what I want. All right. I have a blog. Good for me. Let's imagine that this is your client's blog. You know, you log in, you get all this stuff. I don't think any of it is going to give you any way to hack into my site. So you do have to log out. And then so this is what the client would see if they logged in. It's still in beta, <laughs> so it's, it's going to get shinier and happier, I promise. But they would be able to basically manage copy being where the pages are. They can edit the pages, but can't publish new ones, so they can't fill up with about twos and threes and et cetera. They can add new posts, which I've renamed to articles for clarification. And they can upload media, like photos. Um, there will be other stuff. There will be, are you looking at the cartoon version of me, the glasses version, or my stepmom? <laughs> you see you guys pointing at my photos. I'm like, it's not that exciting. Um, and then from <coughs> the developer side of it, laptop is so tiny. You would go into users. You would pick the user that you wanted, and you would change them to client, which is the role that's built in that controls all that. Um, so it's pretty. It's pretty straightforward in terms of usability, well, button pressing, I should say. Let's see. I'm trying so to think of good examples. Yeah. Do you only use that plugin if you're, you're the one doing the maintenance on there? Yeah, you should only use it if you're the one doing the maintenance. Um, or you can hand it off to someone. It's not a permanent fix. So once you deactivate the plugin and set their rollback, they can do everything. Or if you just set their rollback. I'm trying to think of a good example. Hi. Love your presentation. Oh, thank you. I'm a big believer in this. It's something that I think we've all seen. <laughs> so it's, it's really reassuring to see it. In oh, I'm glad. Presentation form. I would say one tip that I'm a big believer in is, is meeting clients in person and dramatically, sort of like all, all the things that you were saying, absolutely correct. But then meeting them in person, getting to look them in. 
in the eye, understand that you guys are all on the same team, you can al almost sense a point where, not you become friends, but they go from sort of like scared and tense to, oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. He, he's on my team. He wants to help. In some way, it's a way different relationship moving forward, whereas the ones that I've worked with remotely for a long time, only talk to on the phone, I mean, I can get to that point, but it takes a lot longer. Yeah, it's got a good point. I, um, this reminds me, recently, so I, if you ever see my car, it's got the Trump bumper sticker on it. It says, uh, I don't know, not Trump though, 2018 or something. I don't know, whenever the election was. I'm so good at adulting, you guys. I, um, but my, my car is a piece of shit. I said semi-vulgar, there we go. <laughs> yeah, I delivered on my promise. Um, so I had to, it started like just dying. So I took it to Firestone and I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. So please take and fix my car. You know, and I spent $200 for them to clean a hose and then the thing died again. And I walk in and the guy's looking at me like I'm a moron. And so that doesn't make me feel very comfortable. Now I'm pissed off. I want to tell this guy off. I didn't, I didn't yell at the Firestone man, but I wanted to. Uh, and so instead I got a recommendation from my friend and I went to a smaller shop. They fixed my car. They didn't make me feel dumb. They told me exactly what was wrong with it. And now it works. You know, I spent the same amount of money. They fixed my car. They changed my oil. They put air in my tires. I should really think about all those things more often. Like, and that's the biggest difference is, you know, I still don't know how the car works. I don't know why I need to replace brake pads, but it sounds very important, you know? <laughs> but like, that doesn't matter. I don't want to know where the brake pad goes. And I only vaguely want to know how to change the oil out, you know. But they made me feel comfortable. And they were, like, explaining parts of the process, you know, like, this thing controls the computer in your car. The reason it shuts off is that this little part thought that you didn't need any power and you need all the power, you know. So I still don't know what part they fixed, but I understand the concept behind them fixing it. Um, and I'm sure you guys have encountered stuff like that. Like, again, going to the dentist, that sucks, you know. They're like, we need to fix this because your teeth are going to fall out. I don't want to know anything else other than that important fact. Like, if we don't do this, you're going to lose your teeth. That's all I want. Any questions, uh, personal experiences? Well, you talked about the client that caused you to write this project. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good question. My mother. My mother encouraged me <laughs> to write this. So... My, and I, I also have built websites for friends. And the biggest thing is I'll build a website and they'll be like, oh, great, it's shiny and happy, it looks great. And of course, huh? No, it's the academic. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I, I have no idea what that was. Good. Thank you for laughing. I don't know what's happening. I haven't finished this yet. No, the client says, oh, well, I could do that. <laughs> yes, okay, thank you. Thank you for adding that literary tag on it. Got it now. Yeah, no. Um, except it's, you know, it's the opposite. They're always like, can you show me how to do this? Or am I paying you to do it? Or what's going on? And, you know, I'm, uh, I'm kind of starting over. Some of you, if you've seen me before, you know that I was part of the Headway debacle, which was so great. They, Adam Silver reminded me, and I was like, I really thought that nobody remembered that anymore. Uh, but apparently some people do. And so... It's just this whole thing. I'm starting over from scratch. I'm thinking about all the issues I've had in the past. The biggest one is people, clients updating their websites. And clients like my mom. I love my mom. My mom is by no means like a stupid person at all. All right, she's brilliant. She's really good at what she does. She does not care how the website gets built. She just wants to add new pictures from her business. Same thing with my artist friend. She doesn't really care how the website works. She just wants to update her webcomic. And I was looking for solutions. I'm Googling like client proof and then I'm getting like photography proofing plugins, which I got nothing. Uh, and so I started like grabbing bits of code and I thought to myself, I could just like compile it all. I don't really want to use the, uh, I don't know what the user, I think it's just called user permissions or something or user role editor where it's got like every single client role you could ever want and just check boxes. I didn't really want to do that every time I built a website. And so I was like, what's the easiest thing? What are other things? You know, why are people going to Squarespace and Wix when they're so irritating? 
It's because they just want to change the text. You know, my mom just wants to change the text and add some photos. And they thought, if I can build a plugin, then why not? Also, I'm starting a web design business, and I wanted that to be consistent. Um, so there you go, Ray. That's why you can thank my mother. Thank, I'd like to thank my mom for everything. So what, when you, how do you train your clients? I guess do you provide any written or video documentation, or is it just a, like a one-to-one -one or like a screen share, and then like let them loose on the admin session? I well, actually, um, I spent a really long time doing training, so I did. I had uh, I would generate screencasts and direct them to that, or I'd make tutorials and direct them to that. I have a bad habit of starting from scratch, so like that's my giant issue. But I, the thing is, it's again coming back to they don't necessarily want to learn all this. So by the point I'm telling them, log in, hit this button, hit that button, they're already stuck at like log in, you know, because I. <laughs> I prefer to work with bigger. I tried doing bigger jobs, like agency level jobs. I'm just me and I'm bad at teamwork. So I was like, I just want to work with small businesses and help them out. And that's the biggest roadblock is they don't, they don't know how to update and they don't have time to update because they're running their own businesses. Um, I did spend, I used to spend a lot of time being like, here's WordPress, here's why it's awesome. You know, here's how you would log in and edit and this and that. And it just, overwhelming to beginners. Not everyone's going to come in here and listen to these talks and do this and that. Um, so even, I'm saying I try to train my clients as thoroughly as possible, but that's only effective if they want to be trained. So does it wind up that then they'll say, all right, can you just do this? Basically, yeah. It all winds down to then they look at you and they go, you know, can you just do this? And that's the trade-off you get is like, do I spend more hours helping this client or do I try and set up more and keep maintenance? It's it's a trade-off of your time as well. <coughs> bless you, I guess. I don't know. Say bless you when people cough. That's okay. And do it. You know, it's your way. Do whatever you want. <laughs> Bodily autonomy. Any other questions, suggestions, thoughts? Who's your favorite comedian? Who's my me? Who's <laughs> <laughs> your second favorite? My dad. <laughs> I'm really bad at at following the comedy world, honestly. I, um, I don't really look up to any comedians because I don't really compare myself to the ability to get up there. But see, I too have self-esteem issues. We're all humans, all right? We're all people. Just gonna... No. <laughs> no. You get out, sir. No. Does Dreamweaver do WordPress? I haven't heard Dreamweaver in years, and now I'm just... <laughs> I'm just having PTSD about it. <laughs> Remember the Mac web app? That was a fun time. Oh, man. Yeah, that was a good one. They got rid of it, though. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. All the frames. All the frames. Yes, I, too, was there when websites were tables. Yes. How do you handle it when a client does get to that frustration level? A lot of it is, and I've, the great thing about doing customer support all the time is that you get to meet a bunch of frustrated people. So the first thing is just to listen. You don't necessarily have to do like deep listening. You don't, you don't have to invest emotionally like you might with like a TV show. But people like to feel listened to. <laughs> Look, I'm not here. To start shipping you and your husband and figuring out all your drama. No, they're they're pissed off because they don't know what they're doing and they don't feel listened to, and so you kind of sit back and you hear their frustrations and you have to think to yourself. And you can't say don't say the word just. Clients freaking hate the word just. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think if you like think about it, you're like that is kind of a kind of an oddly rude word. Just is a four letter word. <laughs> All right, there we go. Corey Freeman, just as a four-letter word. I'll, I'll autograph it or something. I don't know. Um, so first, you, you listen to them. You let them air their frustrations. Maybe stop them if they start spiraling out of control. But, you know, get, let them kind of run themselves down and then be like, all right, well, how, how can we fix this? You know, don't assign or take blame either. It's just like remembering you are still a service provider. Uh, you are the professional. You do know what you're talking about. And you, 
you kind of have to shift your way around that. So like, if I have a client, I had a client that was pissed off that you couldn't just click whatever you wanted on the web page and make it move where you wanted it to. You know, you can't just go to a website and move it around. He's like, why isn't the internet at that point where I don't have to log in or anything? I had a client get mad at me about the concept of HTML. <laughs> I was very, yeah, no. I had, a, I had a grown man yell at me because he didn't want to learn what an image tag was. And I was like, all right, so when I, you know, when I started out, I didn't know HTML, I didn't know CSS, and I was vehemently against learning CSS and SEO. I was like, I don't need any of this stuff to build websites. I was like 12. <laughs> um, you know, and it gets to that point, and it's like, you have to, you kind of have to reframe it for them. The reason you don't want to use HTML is because, A, the product you're using, someone said to you, this is for beginners. And they thought, absolute beginning, like dead bottom. And so then you're like, all right, well, I understand, and there's not necessarily a workaround for this, but we can make it easier, you know? I can condense it, we can do all the metaphors you want, make some fun illustrations. Um, but basically, the only thing you can do if a client starts giving you shit is take it. <laughs> you know, until it gets to a point, that, I said the S word again, until it gets to a point that they're like attacking you personally, in that case you just cut off the relationship and move on, not worth it. But if they're just spun up, you just kind of wait for them to calm down. Have you had to fire a client before? Yes, I have had to fire a client before. It was great. I'm going to tell you the story now. <laughs> I love to tell stories. This is just a chance for me to talk to you about anything I want. <laughs> I'm throwing the word client from time to time. So I did. I had a client. Uh, she purported to know Anne Rice and like wrote an expose on Hillary Clinton, like this 800 page, I don't, I don't know. And um, she, would, she hired me to do consulting. So we were screencasting over Skype and I was kind of showing her what buttons to press to get to this and that. You know, and she, at one point, I don't remember what I said, probably something Something along the lines of, you know, we've only got an hour, maybe we should shift focus from like you telling me about Hillary Clinton and Anne Rice and your day to day life with your husband. And you're like, you don't want to go to Martha's Vineyard again this year. Whatever. I, that's fine. It's fine. But like, if you want to learn, maybe we should focus your session on the actual job you've hired me to do. And she just exploded, blew up at me. So mad. If I, you know, I'm paying you. And I can use my time however I want. And I was like, nope. And I refunded her, her hourly, the hourly fee that she had paid for the hour. And I said, if you want to yell at me, you can do it for free. <laughs> and I'm going to yell back. <laughs> yes, I fired a client before. Because there's no real reason. And there was also there was a client I should have fired. Um, and it was, again, the kind of guy who was like, oh, I'm better than you because I can do this. And you know, but I'm stupid because I can't do this. Uh, and at some point, I was just like, this is just not worth the drain on my time. This is a guy who Skyped me to tell me to send him instructions from Google to fix his home network. Like, this is this was next level doormatting in my early career. Next level, OK? My doormat game is 100. <laughs> Let me tell you that. So I have a lot of experience dealing with stuff like I that. Question, no, the, so when you have a client who you fire, and they kind of nowadays with the social media the way it is, they always want to talk ill against about you. So they will go to like Google pages or LinkedIn or somewhere and they put negative comments. I'm just curious if you had any thoughts on what you do or how to handle that. Or if there, that ever happened to you? Yes. So there are two ways to deal with negative comments. Obviously the first is to respond to your first issues, your first instinct is to defend yourself. Like, how dare that person speak poorly about me? And the second thing you can do is just ignore it. Just let it go, you know? And the great thing about letting it go is it gets to a point where you, you have to do so well that they can't ignore you, basically. You have to be so good that they can't ignore you. And then someone, if you're doing the right thing, someone else will come in and stick up for you. And at some point, the positivity will outweigh the negativity. 
you get nothing from engaging with someone who's at that point. They're, if they're bad mouthing you on social media, they're already done with you, and they just want to cause you like strife. So it's you can just just let it go, just let them, you know, uh, until they start like attacking you personally. Some people are crazy. Yeah. yeah. So are there uh, particular red flags that you sort of learn? Ooh. This, that, okay, this is probably going to be not a good client. Red flags. The first and foremost, this guy is losing it over here. He's like, look, these are all the thoughts I've been saying for years. Someone finally put it on a PowerPoint. <laughs> it's, just, it's just Google Slides, sir. You can do this. <laughs> Biggest red flag is if they argue with you about price, okay? If you're like, this is the price. And I read, I don't remember, I think it was Ashley Ambridge or someone who was like, the hot dog theory, a hot dog costs this much, and that's it. Nobody argues over the price of a hot dog. Same thing, like, red flag, they're trying to haggle you. Second red flag is they over, kind of like dating. They're trying to haggle with you, <laughs> they over contact you, or they disappear. Like, it's, uh, I th it's the same as with, any red flag. Like if you went into a business yourself and you're like, oh, I see tattoo artists, but they're not wearing gloves. It's kind of like an instinctual thing. Like it's not necessarily that you need to look for specific behaviors. And there are some specific behaviors like, like the haggling, like the over communicating, them telling you, oh, I'm shopping around to try and manipulate you. Um, but it's also a gut instinct. You can tell when someone is like not going to be a good fit for you. And you should just trust your gut instinct because as much as we all like making money, it's, it gets to a point where your personal well-being is. And we, uh, the keynote speaker talked about this too in the beginning where she was like mental health and it's a lot of mental health going around in the WordPress community. Are you guys okay, by the way? <laughs> this is the second year the keynote has been about mental health. I just want to make sure everyone's fine. Feel free to contact me. I'll give you one of my autographed business cards. It'll be great. Sir? Yeah, I'm going to let him answer that because he looks like he knows the answer. <laughs> Yeah, I've always been bad at contracts. I'm still. What's the name? Um, it's the Freelance Union. It's just their website, freelanceunion.org. And you'll see at the top, uh, it's like a bunch of things they have for all the time. And then one is the contact. And they'll make your contacts and all the terms, conditions, and everything you need to have. And they'll do all that stuff. And you can like, set your set the right length of the I think it's Freelancers Union. Oh. I like chalk slash whiteboards, can you tell? <laughs> Thank you for saving me from having to admit that I don't know. <laughs> uh, that's one of my personal feelings. Is, uh, you're supposed to say yes and? Yes, and I don't know. <laughs> I don't do improv. <laughs> that's, okay, yeah, there's, I should do improv, but I don't. This isn't about me, this is about clients. Said the word clients in the last five minutes. Good. Still on topic. <laughs> good. Good for me. Let's see here. I think we got uh, a couple minutes. 
We got like two minutes before you guys can go. Wait, no, I lied. We have like several more minutes than two. What time is it? <laughs> My talk is over at 12.20. Tell us about the process of developing your plugin. Okay, process of developing my plugin is I Googled all the things I wanted to be able to do and then stitched them all together with my experience. I'm so bad at this. What, what parts of the process were you well, interested in? Did you do it because clients were asking you or did you do it, you know, they needed something like this or did you um, create the plugin because you found that clients were getting in and messing up their sites and you wanted yeah. to restrict them? Yeah, so it's that last plugin. one. I decided to build, the because I... I was looking into business models and I was like, all right, the most profitable business model seems to be uh, offering the hosting and the management yourself for a select few clients. And I was like, all right, but then they're going to log in and break something and then I'm going to have to fix it. You know? And I thought, well, what will set me, what will make them want me as opposed to like doing it with Wix and Squarespace? And again, they don't care about the WordPress community necessarily or like, all the development, and so I was like, well, maybe I can find something that'll make it easier for them to use. And then when I couldn't, I was like, maybe I can build something that'll make it easier for them to use. And so that was kind of, so I sat down and I was like, all right, what do I, what did they ask me to want to do? What do clients usually want to do after you've got the whole process and development through? And it's, they want to change the text and the images uh, and if they really put in energy, they want to blog. But I haven't, I have yet to have a normal client be like, I want to change the layout after the process had been complete. Like after the website had been built, I haven't had anyone be like, oh, I suddenly want an overhaul or I want this to go there. You know, it's not m until months later if they're even doing any user testing that they decide to change things like that. Okay, and then um, I noticed that instead of posts, it says articles. And there were some other words that you changed on the back end to make it a little more client yeah. friendly. Um, how, did you research that first, or did you just come up with that on your own? So you based on the cumulative experience that I've gotten through consulting and whatnot, another general question that pops up all the time, what is the difference between a page and a post? You know, and so clients will go in and they'll just start adding pages, because that's what we think of. It's a web page. We're going to this web page and that web page. You know, or like, oh, I've just posted a blog, and that's always driven me crazy. Like, it's a blog post, not you can't post a whole blog. That's fine. And so it's like, okay, well, what other terms do I understand? You know, edit, manage your website copy. Those are the pages. Edit, add an article. That's your blog. You know, um, upload photos. It just says media if you go into the WordPress backend and. Nobody, no, it's like the hamburger menu. Sure, I know what media means, but it's confused. So just photos, just add your photos. Um, just stuff like that. It's basically what, over time, it's what people have asked me and what I've run into. Because uh, one time I had a person ask me, like, what is a redirection? Stuff like that. So I started at the very beginning, and I was like, what, what does my mom not know how to do? And that's no detriment to... Because I know we had an issue yesterday where someone was like, do the grandma test. It's not a sex, it's just like literally it was my, specifically my mom, know how to and what not to do. Um, and so that's, I was just like, how do I make my life less stressful so she's not calling me constantly? Ray. Uh, yeah, just, uh, what do you usually do if you have clients that don't like what you do? You take your direction. And like, how do you usually handle that? Ugh, poorly. <laughs> <laughs> Poorly. Clients that don't want to listen often, you can I've mostly let them cool down so that I could sit back and figure it out. And I try to figure out if someone gives me advice that I don't want to take, why don't I want to take the advice? And usually it's just, it sounds hard. It's usually just that it sounds harder. And you have to let them know, like, even if this is difficult, we'll get past it. Um, uh, another question. I am now. <laughs> yeah, I am. Yeah. Um, actually, had this happen. Um, how okay. do you handle? You got a client right, who is colorblind, Ooh. and he's telling you that he wants his website in these colors, and 
they are extremely horrible for websites and just user experiences in general. So yeah, he wants to use colors. The great thing about colors is that they're, what? <laughs> okay, I didn't hear that, but you, you, you chuckled, so I imagine it was hilarious. <laughs> The great thing about colors with, with web design is you don't really have to use all of them. And they're usually used as accents. So as design has developed, we've gotten into minimalist design. Um, but even if you're not going full minimalist, all colors should be used to have a function. So even if you've got, uh, what doesn't match? Like bright yellow and, uh, what doesn't go with bright yellow? Orange. orange. Like you've got bright yellow and orange. Well. The logo can be bright yellow, and then like any link on the footer or whatever can be orange. And it's like as long as you're not clustering those colors together, you can still give the client something they need and something that a website visitor can look at, whether or not they're colorblind. You know, it's all about. I think when we design sites, we get into our heads. I like these colors, so I'm just going to kind of throw them in. But over time, you're like, okay, well, the reason that the reason for any color on a website is either branding or function. Um, so, you, or just make the logo a rainbow and make everything else black and white. The colors they want, it should be the logo. Yeah, well, that's let's get with your graphic designer and fix the <laughs> fix the logo. Ugh. The website's red, but the client thinks it's maroon. I, I, you know, I should just, you should probably just ask him what colors he can see and work from there. <laughs> no, we finally found a solution. Oh, good. But what was your solution? Um, the client was sending us colors, so we actually went online to uh, <coughs> Colorblind Color Picker. Yeah. Um, plugged in the colors they were using, and it was given back, you know, these are other colors that, that you know, fit, fit this type of colorblind person would see as the same color. Yeah. And we finally found one that was, you know, Neat. semi match he knew the answer the whole time. He's got me sitting here sweating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's fine. I want to learn. I'm ready to learn. That's true. Yes. Accessibility. Yep. So, something we've done in the past to determine the viability of the design. Um, I don't know on Android, but on iPhones, in accessibility, they have certain color schemes you can change for you know people with color blindness. Um, so you can apply those filters and then you know look at your site and see if it makes sense or not. Yeah. Just like text is disappearing. Me. Things of that nature. Yep. And since you said that most of your client frustration comes from insecurity from their standpoint, so you have to be the one who's confident. And, yep. Uh, if there's something you don't know besides Google, what do you do? So it comes down to the thing. The thing about being an expert, people think it's that you know everything. That's not true. Being an expert means that you know what you know, and if you don't know, you know how to find out. So aside, there's nothing you can do aside from searching it if you don't know how to do something. So either you're Googling the answer or you're turning to a connection that you have. So like, if I'm really bad at SEO, I would be like, hey, Amanda, give me some tips so I can maybe fix this. Um, you know, like I need to figure out better voicing, but like Jen, help me out. I got no idea what I'm doing over here, but it's not so much, you don't have to, and that's another insecurity that developers have themselves. Like I have to know everything. You don't, you just have to know how to find out. So in your experience then, have you built like a referral base of people that you reach out to on a regular basis? You know, it's great. You recommend? Like I absolutely recommend that. I have the problem of knowing people, learning people who have skill sets, but then not asking them anything. Learn from my mistakes. Talk to the people that you network with here, because we all know something. And then to get, together, we'll build a better WordPress community. Yay. That's why we come to WordCamp. Exactly. That's why we're here, so that Jen can answer all the content questions, and I can make jokes during a five-minute presentation. Yep. Concept to having this fully formed, you know, whatever beta, you know, beta version, you know, that you're using. How long did that take? A couple of weeks, honestly. It's mostly because I spend a lot of time watching Netflix. Um, 
and then debating whether or not it was worth developing and then bothering Ray every other version, like, can you test this? <laughs> Ray Mitchell's in the back. Um, it's, just, it's just a lot of typing. I don't really, I'm not super great at giving out processes, but it's kind of like, I want to do this. I know a little bit about how to do it, so how do I take that further? How do I remove things from the admin menu? And like, how do I remove the sub pages then so that they really can't get into it? Um, you know, and then I have to put things like, oh, do I really want them to not do this? So I put it back in. And then it's like, okay, well, what do I need to get done? And you can spend forever developing a plugin and like not putting it out there because you want yeah. it to be perfect. But I won't know how good or bad it is until someone else uses it. So it does what I say it does. And so I'm going to give it out there and hope that it then does what other people hope that it does. So, and I mean, also like time-wise, including, I mean, you made a site specifically for the plugin, like to sell the plugin. I did make a site specifically to sell the plugin. It's www.clientproofwp.com. Um, I mean, how long did that, was that part of that multi-week process? Setting up the website was actually pretty quick because mm -hmm. all I did was like buy the domain, install it, and add Beaver Builder, same thing. I tried really hard not to sit there and like slave over the perfect landing page because I still don't really know how best to market it. You know, It's like this is what I'm saying it does, but I don't yet know how people are going to be using it, so I don't yet know the exact message that I want. And starting out, we all want things to be picture perfect. You know, like, you know uh, WordPress came out and it powers 30% of the web already. No, it doesn't, and you know, it's, even with Gutenberg's coming out, we're all freaking out because, like, what's the message now? Is it going to change? You just kind of have to shove stuff out there and see what happens. And what about, um, like, part of that website, payment processing and then, like, digital download management? I actually used uh, freemius.com. So I, my main issue is automatic updates. Um, and it's, I still have to learn Git, and I'm not super familiar with the API. So I looked for a service that would do that for me, and thankfully I found one that takes, well, it takes out a heavy um, commission. Uh, I, you get nothing if you don't put it out there. I get, right. Right. you know, a percentage is better than zero. Right. Freemius? Freemius, yep. Yeah. It's a mix, honestly. I wish that I could say that I copy pasted everything and then just changed the name and that there were all these tutorials that I used. Honestly, it's the biggest part of developing anything is knowing what question to put into Google, basically. So, you know, I might say, like, I started with uh, how to client proof your WordPress site, and I got a list of like 20 plugins that you could use. And I was like, okay, that's a lot. So let's start with how to change the name of a menu item. And that got me to code I didn't quite understand. So then I flipped down, like, who wrote a tutorial on this? So then I'll follow the tutorial and start messing with that. And from there it goes, OK, I know how to do this. Uh, how to build a user role. 50 more plugins. I don't want that. So maybe I'll download a plugin and dig through the code until I find the exact one that's like, this makes the new user role. Um, yeah, I, I wish that I had a comprehensive tutorial or that I like had a site that I visit all the time, but I, it's a lot of searching. Yes? Can I add, can I add a resource? Please do. So at codex.wordpress.org, there's a, it tells you how to slash writing underscore a underscore plugin. Awesome URL. Um, but the codex on wordpress.org tells you how to do all that stuff. The WordPress way. You do a lot of so that's one um, resource too. Trying to make a list. I'm listening, I'm sorry. No, I just wanted to, I'm on the marketing team. I have to tell about the codex. Oh yeah, that's like, true. Like, that, like, the codex is actually the official documentation of the codex. Right, like, well, it tells you how to, just in case anybody else didn't know. Not that you okay. That's the only, you know, in 
in-depth tutorial that I have been able to find on creating. Yeah. Yeah, for a lot of people, they'll force plugins. Like Devin Walker did a really good talk at WordCamp LA in 2015. It's on the WordPress.tv. And he forced EDB to make gifts. And so he did that in um, six months. No, six weeks, six weeks. He forced it in six weeks. So um, that's all, also, he talked in depth about how he did it. I would definitely watch that. Also, also when I heard about it, uh, I went to a Cincinnati work camp last year. It was called generatewc.com, where it has, like, it helps you generate, like, partial portions of. Uh, oh, yeah, I've seen that before. Yeah. You kind of select what you're doing, and then it'll be like, this is kind of what you're trying to do. Here's code. And in addition to finding tutorials, uh, a lot of people skip the idea that you can write a tutorial. You don't have to know the exact part. Once you, if you find a piece of code that works, there's no reason you can't post it yourself. You know, you can't. You can go on your blog if you're developing something that's relevant and be like, oh, how to change the name. There might be thousands of tutorials, but not that you've written. So. Don't be afraid to like learn as you go and then share your knowledge. That's how I built my first business using Headway. It was just like, oh, I'm learning this thing. Now I know how to do this. So I'm going to post it to my blog so I don't forget the code. And then maybe other people will learn it too. And there's one more that I also learned. OK. Uh, WPPD.me WordPress plugin boilerplate generator. So that one is kind of a cool one too. Oh. I, I'm probably running out of writing room. Was it WPB? WPPB.me. WordPress plugin boilerplate generator. Sounds exhausting. Any other questions? All right. Well, that's about it. Ask me anything. I'll be. I'll probably be at the happiness bar.